Hello, my name is Vesa Yuvonen, and in this demonstration we will have a closer look on how you can actually brand your private mind sites and obviously the, the public mind sites or personal sites as well using the new SharePoint app uh, pattern or the cloud application model. So without any server-side customizations or any uh, feature framework elements, we can still apply uh, branding elements uh, to the private my sites or personal sites as well. The only thing is that we need to kind of think through uh, how the sites are provisioned uh, and we can either overwrite the provisioning engine or we can automatically apply the branding uh, to persons, my site, uh, from the intranet front page or any, any content pages within the intranet or, for example, by placing a SharePoint app on the uh, my site host. So whenever the user actually arrives on the my site host or the personal, uh, sorry, for the intranet, uh, we will actually apply branding or updated branding on the personal side as well. First of all, let's have a look on the on the my site structure uh, slightly more detailed. So first of all, we need to notice uh, certain things. So the public my site host uh, is usually uh, hosted, uh, for example, uh, in the URL of of mycontoso.com. And the key point of this one is that this is the root uh, site collection uh, of the of the application. It doesn't have to be uh, a root, but it's a separate site collection anyway than your private my site or the, the uh, SkyTrive Pro. So while we actually move across the news feed or about me, we are all the time actually uh, working within the public my site host site. If we actually go to the SkyTrack Pro, uh, then the URL is uh, changing. So we're able to actually see that this is a completely separate URL, uh, which is actually in the mycontoso.com slash personal slash administrator uh, and so forth. So it's a separate site collection, uh, which means that if for every single end user uh, and every single person within the farm or within the Office 365 who, is, who will have a SkyTrack Pro site, there will be a separate site collection applied. Uh, and in this particular case, this is actually a really good example. So in our uh, public MySite host, we already have applied a, a custom branding using theming, uh, which is slightly more uh, maintainable or cost-friendly, friendlier approach than using a, 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 a custom master pages. So that's the reason why we use uh, theming in our demos. But as you can see in the public my site, we have a, a grayish, uh, slightly modified branding. Uh, but then whenever the private my site has been applied or created, uh, it has been uh, applied and created using the out of the box behavior and out of the box look and feel. Uh, obviously, it's really good if you don't need to change this and you're happy with the colors and all of that, but you can actually modify uh, the branding of the private uh, or personal sites uh, pretty, pretty easily. And the whole model is actually based on the highly enhanced uh, social client APIs. So let's actually have a look on, on the code. And while we're starting to have a look on the code, I'll start deploying the application at the same time so we can actually walk through uh, what is actually then happening within our code. Uh, the code itself is a provider hosted application uh, or share provider hosted SharePoint app. In this case, it's running in my local IS Express. It could be running in Windows Azure for the Office 365, or it could be running, well, virtually anywhere in the world uh, or any, any hosting uh, technology in the world. And the, the application is built in a way that the the real full screen uh, experience, uh, it doesn't actually do anything. So I, I just only have a few notes here saying, with a few typos, uh, saying uh, what is it actually for and how, do, how it should be used. But then what, how do we actually use this, uh, the personal, or how do we apply the branding is that we actually go to one site within the existing, let's say, tenant or in your intranet or, um, well, deployment. Um, a good example would be the private my site, uh, sorry, the public my site host. Just as well, we could actually add this app part uh, to a intranet front page uh, if you would like to apply branding changes to your to people's personal sites from there. Uh, now that the app has been deployed, we can actually take that app into a use uh, in this public my site. So let's click add an app. And while we are adding app, we will get a, a list of uh, app parts which are available. Uh, oh, not add an app. 
because we are actually editing the, the page and adding the, we already added the app using the Visual Studio. So let's edit the page and add a, add a web part. Before we actually do that, this uh, natively out of the box in the my sites, this is the, the funky named uh, web part, uh, which is out of the box uh, web part, which is actually the one which is taking care of the personal my site creation. So if you would like to override that completely, the personal my site creation, you can actually take uh, get rid of this web part and then uh, replace the personal say personal my site creation using your app part as well. So that's that's also supported in the social API, which is pretty cool. Uh, in my case, however, I, what I want to do is is that I want to make sure that we we apply the the custom branding to the private my site, but I want to take advantage of the out of the box uh, behavior. So that's the reason why I don't actually get rid of the web part. Uh, I'm, what I want to do is that I want to actually the SharePoint provision me a personal my site or personal site, and then using this app I can apply whatever branding elements what I want on the on the personal my site. So I'm adding the personal site uh, customizer. Uh, seems to be a few more uh, other apps uh, there as well. Uh, the app is installed and our code is actually executed. So how does these things actually now work? We're getting the SharePoint uh, host URL, uh, and as mentioned, this is a provider hosted app, so we're actually running outside of a, a SharePoint context again. So this is a, a, this a, a app part which is pointing to this modified personal my site, and then in the back, uh, in the server side code of that ASP.NET application, we're actually doing the, let's say, magic of applying the branding to personal my site. And for that, we are using the, the as mentioned, the social uh, APIs. There's a one trick, however, uh, what we are doing here is that we are using the, the client context without the app authentication. And this is something which definitely is not available uh, when you do app development for the marketplace. But if you do a, a custom uh, app development uh, for your customers or your own uh, SharePoint deployment, you can approach these things slightly differently. And this actually gives us the benefit of, of ignoring the app permissions. Uh, what we do here is that we essentially take connection and using the client-side API, using the, the old school SharePoint 2010 way uh, without OAuth. So we're only taking into account the user identity permissions. Uh, and that's kind of, a, in this case, this is a proof of concept, but that's there for ignoring uh, or let's say avoiding um, additional permissions because each user has permission directly to access uh, the user profile and they can actually work uh, with that. So we're kind of bypassing the app permission thing. Um, so what we're doing here is that we're uh, getting the user profile, we're loading the user profile. Uh, there's what an additional semicomma, not a meaningful one. Uh, we're taking the personal site uh, site collection or we're loading that. If that object wasn't there, uh, we could actually provision. And what this would actually do is the exact same thing, what the out of the box web part, the funky named web part in the public my site host would have been doing, is that it would schedule a personal site to be created for a particular user. Uh, there's actually a, a synchronous creation option available in the CSM API as well. Um, do you want to do this and override the out of the box uh, behavior? Probably not. Uh, so it's not necessarily uh, something what you want to do, but what's actually more interesting is that you can place this app part now anywhere in the tenant or in this SharePoint farm. And this would actually work as long as the that particular application has been associated to the same user profile service application. So when the site actually exists, uh, we are able to modify the branding by applying a theme. Uh, don't worry about the typos in the in the comments. You can probably understand what's uh, meant to be written there anyway. So what we do here is that we actually take the URL uh, of the site collection uh, and we load uh, the root web of the site collection. Uh, let's actually walk through the code. Uh, there's the pro user profile, getting the site, loading the site, uh, site collection, the personal site collection, the personal site collection already existed. Uh, so let's actually create an ex uh, a new context uh, using the personal site URL because the previous context is actually running in the in the host web context where the app was installed. 
And in here, uh, we essentially take the root web uh, of, the, of the site collection and we apply a theme. Uh, technically, uh, the themes are the, the theme selection is not available in the private uh, in the personal my sites, but you can actually apply the theme programmatically. So the theming files are available there. Just as well, you could actually upload a custom master page, uh, but that wouldn't be a, as as cost efficient from a maintenance perspective. So let's move forward. We apply the theme. We execute the query, um, and Eventually, when the, the, the WCF calls uh, end, uh, in this particular case, we're just actually writing something on the on the app part, which means that now uh, the my site has existed and the personal my site uh, has been customized, and this essentially would be now working against dynamically on that person's personal my site who is accessing the public my site host. And the key point here, what I already mentioned like two to three times, is that you can actually place this web app part anywhere within your uh, tenant or within your uh, SharePoint deployment, as long as it can figure out the user profile context. Um, and that would still make the branding updated on the personal my site using the cloud application model. So now if we go to the SkyTrack Pro, which is the personal my site, we're able to see that uh, the, the branding, the theming, the coloring has been applied uh, within the private my sites. Again, the key point also is that we're using the cloud application model. So I can actually now update this branding or the code or the behavior uh, without deploying, without the need of service breaks, without any, any need of, of deploying actually any code on a SharePoint servers. Uh, the whole behavior, what we saw here, was done by running an external ASP.NET IIS application, uh, which can be running in Windows Azure, can be running in, in local IIS boxes and so forth. So it brings us more agile and more reliable SharePoint deployments as well. And using this pattern, as you can see, the cloud application model uh, can be used also for Branding, branding behavior uh, for the private uh, and, and public my sites, obviously, as well. So this is a, a class, this has been kind of a classic challenge, uh, how you can personalize a, a personal my sites into Office 365. And there's your answer. Hopefully the demo was interesting and the code is uh, downloadable in the blog post as well. So feel free to actually figure out and modify the code any way you want. Uh, it's all for you uh, to be used. Uh, this is not, however, meant to be deployed directly to the production. Uh, it's just a proof of concept code. So please make sure that you test it carefully within your deployment as well. But the whole point, again, cloud application model can be actually pretty, pretty powerful. No customizations in a SharePoint and we're still able to apply interesting changes to our SharePoint farm.